and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. We just got here to where Laodicea is. Really beautiful morning. See the mountains over there. Hey, what's up, Brother Tony? Hey, God bless, guys. We're here at uh, Laodicea. First thing in the morning. Wow, this is actually one of the bigger sites of the seven churches. This is probably like the largest ruins as far as like the the area of, of the what's left of the ruins and the ancient structures. Um, Ephesus was pretty big. Pergamon was, was pretty big. Man, this is this is incredible, bro. Guess this was the richest area of Asia Minor. I think Ephesus was probably, or was definitely very rich too, because uh, they were a sea trading port city. But man, this is crazy. They were, the Christians that lived here, they were rich and thought that they were in need of nothing but they were spiritually poor. They were lukewarm. They didn't have much love for God, much obedience to God, because wealth and prosperity is a distraction from, from spending time with God, from being close to, to Jesus. There's some ancient Greek writing. I love seeing that. So cool. All their prominence is now completely forgotten. It's completely forgotten. Nobody thinks about it. Nobody even talks about it. <laughs> That's right. It's all gone. Only what's done for Jesus Christ will last. That's what this says to me. This is incredible. Imagine what this place must have looked like when it was in its prime. Mm -hmm. Not uh, 
worn down at all, just fully I'm actually really built. stunned by this layer to see it, brother. I mean, these people must have been filthy, stinking rich. Because yeah. even Ephesus was the world's largest um, ancient sea trading port in the world at that time. <laughs> and this is way bigger than what we saw in Ephesus. I mean, Ephesus, they did have the largest um, amphitheater, I think, in, in the... Uh, in the Roman or the Greek world. That was definitely a large amphitheater. It was, yeah, it's a huge amphitheater. It seats thousands. But this is just massive. Just look at all of these pillars. And all these structures that were here. Absolutely amazing. Brother, we were recording. Yeah. The Laodiceans, they sold their soul for this. This is what they live for. They live for money. They live for wealth. They live for prosperity. They said, I'm rich and I have increased with goods. I have need of nothing. But any time that you grow in wealth and you grow in affluence, you begin to push God to the edges. You push God to the edges of your life until finally your entire life is consumed with simply getting and attaining another one of these. This is a model for Christians today. Don't do that. Don't push God to the edges in the pursuit of vain glory, in the pursuit of wealth, because this is what it comes to. Ruins. It all comes to ruins. Everything is now forgotten. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the furnace and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. We need to put on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not the fashions of this world like Paul said in Romans 1 or 12.1. He said, don't be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, mm -hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We don't, Amen. we're not following the fashions of this world. We're not looking for the raiment of this world. We're not looking to be clothed with all the treasures. We're not selling our soul for this. We're not selling our soul for this. That's not going to help you in eternity. I'm leaving this money with the Laodiceans. The Laodiceans can have it. I'm following Christ. Jesus said that he wanted them to anoint their eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. See, the Laodiceans were known for this medication called eye salve that helped with eyesight and um, it was very famous actually for this for this particular city people would come from all over to receive it um, and he said anoint thine eyes with eye sob that thou mayest see it was like an, an oily substance like a cream of some kind that they would put on their eyes you know we need the oil of the Holy Spirit so that we can see <laughs> amen we need to walk in the Spirit so that we can see. People are trying to walk in this world, but they can't see where they're going. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. <laughs> Follow Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit that you might be able to see. <laughs> Under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans right? These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert either cold or hot, but because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art poor, wretched, miserable, blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment 
that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye saw that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcome and have sat down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So we're here at the ancient city of Laodicea. Now the Laodiceans had an issue with their water. See, the water of Laodicea was very mineralized. It wasn't like the water that came from Colossae, which came up high in the mountains where the snow melted and then the, came, the water ran down and it was just nice and pure. The water in Laodicea was extremely mineralized. In fact, just um, what, east of here, mm -hmm. you'll see a massive mineral cliff. A lot of this water was just really, really rich in minerals, which if you were to drink it at the wrong time of the day, you would actually just spew it out of your mouth. And that's what, that's, that's the reference that Jesus is making to the Laodiceans. He said, because you are neither hot nor cold, he said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth, vomit it out. See, a lot of people, if they were to do that, to take that water in, at the, you know, when it was uh, too mineralized, would have done that very, very same thing. And so that's a great illustration that Jesus used about the water source here. The water it was, the source was bad here. They had bad water. They had a problem with their water. A lot of people have a problem with their soul, just as the Laodiceans had with their water. Mm -hmm. Because you're neither hot nor cold, I'm going to speed you out of my mouth. Don't try to tell me that it's once saved, always saved. That's a lie from hell. The ancient pipes that would run underneath the city, bringing water from the springs. Uh, actually, they brought water from several places, sometimes up in the hills, sometimes from the springs. And the pipes would actually pipe the water all the way in here. This would have come probably further out to here. And there would have been either a cistern or some kind of pool. Right here is another one. These pipes oh, wow. would connect. So these pipes would have connected, probably running down this hill back to that mm -hmm. temple down there. And you can see there's one right there on that side, and yes. then it lines up to that, that one over there. Here, all the way back to the other side to where that temple was at. This is your, I mean, these are ancient... Um, you know, public utilities, mm -hmm. I mean, basically, that they had built into the city. Um, they're very sophisticated. Now let's let's very, walk over here and see. Uh, this was a very wealthy city. Oh, yeah, you can tell. Now, brother, look at this right here. You can see where they've done some reconstructive work on these, mm. uh, where they put this uh, cap on here to protect the erosion. This is the original. This would mm. have been some of the restoration that they've done. Okay. Some more Greek writing on that thing. These are ancient Greek writings. Wow, this, this is just huge, man. It looks like it looks like some of this stuff they they added. Yeah, some of some this new. And the then stuff on the top. And then yeah, they put the old stuff okay, so on the top. This is the new stuff down here. This yeah, you can definitely tell that's not really that new. old. Up at the top, that's all the original. Yeah, and then right there too, on that one. H. Laodicea. Man. <clears throat> yeah, this place was filthy, stinking rich. It's probably one of the richest. Hello, everybody. We're here at the ancient city of Laodicea in Turkey, and we're going to talk about what it means to be lukewarm. Um, you know, this is when Christians are, they're neither cold nor hot. And Jesus said he was going to spew the lukewarm Laodiceans out of his mouth. Just like in every age um, with all Christians, 
that are that are lukewarm, that are not on fire for God, but yet at the same time, they still believe in Jesus Christ. They're not completely cold. They're not totally lost either. They're just sitting in the middle. And um, all Christians of all ages that are like that, they're gonna be spewed out of Jesus' mouth, which let's just be honest and come to, to grips with the fact of what Jesus is literally saying there. He's saying they're gonna go to hell. He's saying they're not gonna make it to heaven because they don't truly love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength as God commands us to. And so um, the reason why God hates um, lukewarm Christians and, and he's more upset about that than the people who are just honest about it and will just admit, yeah, I don't love God at all. I'm, I'm not a Christian at all. I don't, I don't believe in that stuff at all. You know, I think God even has more respect for uh, people like that that are complete unbelievers than he does for those who are trying to ride the fence because the thing of it is is that everyone will be judged based on the light that they had, based on the grace that they received. And so those who have received a lot of grace, those who have uh, received a lot of light from God's Word, from the Holy Spirit, you know, people who have grown up Christian, they've gone to church their whole life, they know a lot about the Lord, they know a lot about His Word, they have a lot that they're going to be accountable for on Judgment Day. And so if you're not living up to the, to the light and the knowledge you have, then you're not going to make it to heaven because um, Jesus said that uh, to whom much is given, much shall be required. And also it says in Luke chapter 12, verse uh, 47 and 48, Jesus says, and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. So it's kind of like, um, at a job you have an employer and you have employees and the person who is more experienced um, the employer is going to expect them to get more work done to do better quality of work he's going to expect way more out of them but the person that's new on the job that's just learning the trade um, the, the boss isn't going to expect them to produce as much work and to do as as good of a, of a job as the more experienced person and so it's the same thing in the Christian life. Those who, um, those who know the Lord's will, they know what they should be doing, they've received a lot of, of light and they don't live up to it, they're gonna receive a worse punishment in hell than the heathen that never heard the gospel or, or the lost person maybe who, who has heard the gospel but never accepted it. So that's the danger of lukewarmness. If you are a lukewarm Christian, then you need to do what Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, verse 19, where he said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You need to get on fire for God and love God and obey Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I want you guys to look at this water here in this cauldron. Likely, this water has been sitting here for who knows how long. This is an ancient city. This water's been sitting here. This is likely rainwater. There's no telling how long this water's been in here. You know, this is what happens to a stagnant person. A person that doesn't receive new revelation or new water. See this pipe? This pipe would bring in fresh water. Okay, new water to make this cauldron pure. What happens is when people don't evangelize and people don't share the gospel and people don't tell others about Christ, they become stagnant like this water here. Mm -hmm. It becomes stagnant. It becomes like pond water. Why is the Dead Sea dead? The Dead Sea is the lowest area on the earth. It's in, it's in Israel today. You can go and see it. But the Dead Sea is dead because it's the lowest part of the earth and no water ever leaves the Dead Sea. It never goes anywhere. Water always comes to it, but it never goes anywhere. See, if your Christianity is all about just receiving from your pastor, receiving from your church, 
receiving from other people, receiving revelation from God, but you're never giving any of it out. You're never giving to others. You're never sharing it with people. You're never doing anything with the light that you have. You're going to become like this. Totally disgusting. Totally stagnant. See, the Laodiceans were a lukewarm church. They weren't, they weren't on fire for God. They weren't doing the works for God. He said you were neither caught, hot nor cold. You didn't have the sins of Thyatira. You weren't in fornication and idolatrous sacrifices. He didn't really talk about that at all. But they weren't like uh, the Smyrnans. And they weren't like the Philadelphians. Who were serving God with charity and service and faith. They were in the middle. This was a church that was in the middle. And Jesus said, you know what? I hate that. I'm going to spew that out of my mouth. I don't want anything to do with that. So you can't ride the fence with God. You know, my brother here was talking earlier about how that we are all going to be judged based upon the light that we have received. If you look around here, this was a city that had received all kinds of blessings from God. But what were they doing with those blessings? Were the Laodiceans uh, fervent and zealous for giving to missions work? No. They were about enriching themselves. They were about making themselves grander and more splendid. They weren't focused on being zealous for God. That's why Jesus said to them, Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The Laodiceans had a problem with their zeal. They were not zealous for their God. It's time that we get zealous for God. Here at the ancient city of Laodicea, and God brought some scriptures to our memory here, Dakota and I. Um, Paul was preaching in, I believe it was Troas. He was preaching late into the evening, and it says there was a man named Eutychus that was sitting in the window. There was many lights in the upper chamber. And it said this young man fell asleep. He was probably in his late teens, who knows. He fell asleep in the window and fell to his death. All the way down and just died. Well, Paul came down and actually, I mean, there's some debate over whether he actually rose the man from the dead or if he was just knocked out. We didn't know. I think they said he was taken up dead and he actually got up again. Um, but if you look at that, that is a great type of what's going on right now. People are asleep. They are literally asleep and that is going to result in their death. The Laodiceans were asleep. They were neither cold nor hot. They weren't living for God. They were asleep in the light. They had all this light, all this knowledge, all this revelation, and yet they're asleep. It's like somebody sleeping in till 11.30 a.m. in the morning. All the light coming through the windows, all the light coming into the room, yet here they are, just asleep on their bed. They can't get up. They can't do anything for God. That was what the Laodiceans were. High up on this hill, beautiful scenery. It looks like something out of Switzerland, really. Beautiful place, high mountains, great views. It was probably like a resort. They probably came here to get away and enjoy life and just vacation and have a great time. But brothers and sisters, there's more to life than just having fun. There's more to life than just having a good time. There's more to life than another vacation. That's not serving God. See, here's another thing I want to bring up. Just because you know the doctrines of the Bible, just because you know Scripture, just because you go to church, that does not mean you are serving God. That does not mean you are doing the will of God. Because you know your Bible, or you read your Bible, or you know the doctrine, or you've been to Bible college, or you go to church. Congratulations, but you still are not doing the will of God. What does God want you to do with the time that you have? Does He want you to spend it playing Call of Duty? Or does He want you to answer the Call of Duty? Does He want you to play some stupid Candy Crush for eight hours? <laughs> or does He want you to go out and preach the gospel? <laughs>
So this is actually apparently where the church in Laodicea met inside this ancient building. Crazy. We beat the crowd here because we yep. were here earlier. Glad we got up early. There's some more water pipes. show you guys something too this is the um when they decided to do the council of um where is it here's the rules actually i think it's on this one the council of laodicea they actually have all of them but the thing is a lot of these are commandments of men and not necessarily based off scripture hmm. um you can see all the specifics and stuff right here there were some interesting ones that's interesting the holy place is forbidden to heretics. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so I knew you were going to like that. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a couple of these. Like, what, like, what's a neophyte? I can't remember what that is, to be honest. There was that, and there was a couple other interesting. When, when Phrygians return there to be baptized anew, even if among them they were reckoned clergymen, whoso prayeth in the cemeteries and martyries of heretics is to be excommunicated. Thou shalt not marry a heretic. <laughs> Widows called presidents shall not be appointed in churches. Who's, whoever is most approved in faith and life and most learned, he is fit to be chosen bishop. That sounds reasonable. Some of them are actually pretty reasonable. It's just not all of them. Whoso is chosen by seculars is ineligible. <laughs> it is not right to send the holy gifts to another p parish. The gospel, the epistle, and the other scriptures are to be read on the Sabbath. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff. It's interesting too. It's like, yeah, the facts and chiseled things out of the walls, and you know they were just hung out here. And, and so it's hard to have something like this be preserved intact 2,500 years after. I think it's amazing, though, how God I think has allowed all of these seven churches to be preserved all these locations throughout turkey really it should be the eight churches because we got colossal too yeah but i mean that's an, that's another one it's not the seven of revelation yeah but i would conclude the eighth church in the Asia Minor. yeah we gotta go to that one All right, so one more thing about the church in Laodicea, or the letter to the Christians in Laodicea, um, is even though the Laodiceans were the weakest Christians of the all the Christians of the seven churches of Asia Minor, um, they were lukewarm. They were they were spiritually bankrupt. Um, and uh, but the encouraging thing is is that at the end of the letter to them uh, Jesus says if you repent if you overcome then you will sit down uh, with me in my father's throne um, and so that's an encouraging thing because it yes. shows that no matter how weak you are in your in your walk with, with Christ no matter how lukewarm you are there's still a chance to repent if you repent if you repent and there's still uh, a chance to um, not just get right with God but to sit down with, to, him, in to sit down with him in his throne to have eternal life um, to share in, in the authority of Christ that's part of you know being a Christian is see not just being saved but but having having the authority that, that Christ gives us whether that be to lay hands on the sick that they may recover or or uh, cast out devils, or or just see answered prayer. So, you know, I when I see the Church of Laodicea, I think about Laodicea. I think about a church that neglected its gifts, neglected the gift that it was in. It. You know, Paul said, "Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by the laying on the hands of the presbytery." He said, 
Give thyself wholly to these things. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. He said, give yourself wholly to these things. Because, because in doing so, you're not only going to save yourself, but also others. See, the later Laodiceans had no impact upon the people around them. Because they were not serving God themselves. They were not able to affect change in the world. Because their focus was upon the wealth. It was upon the opposite. It was upon the riches and upon God. It couldn't affect change in the world. Mm -hmm. Amen.